Sooner Scoop HD. Joined by Defensive Coordinator Ted Roof. If you have a question, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. Okay, sorry, Eric Bailey. Coach, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to ask you just when you go through the summer, just the responsibility of the guys to on their own study, memorize, try to get into a jump to be prepared for fall camp. How much did you ask them to do that, and do you, how much do you expect them to really be prepared mentally for what you guys are going to do this fall? Well, there's uh, NCAA rules that we have to follow as far as a certain amount of hours that uh, we can require them to be here, but uh, you know, you never regret doing more than what's required. And uh, our guys have spent a lot of time on their own this summer, and I think we've had a great summer. I think we're we're better defensively now than when we started the summer, but we should be. Uh, but some places aren't. So I've been real proud of the way that our guys have worked, and I think we've made some strides. And uh, you know, looking forward to, to getting started. But being player led, that's a big deal. Uh, coaches can do this and do that, but when your players take ownership and it becomes player led. And then you're you're moving in a really good direction. Let's go to James Hale. You know, Chad, uh, you appear to have a real athletic group at linebacker. Could you talk about that group a little bit and how athletic it is? I know you had testing recently, and Winter always seems to do pretty well in that testing. Yeah, you know, there's a the thing that I like about that group is there's a lot of competition. Uh, there's a lot there's competition for starting jobs. Uh, there's going to be competition for playing time. And uh, any time there's competition, that makes everybody better. So I, I like that. Uh, you're right, we are athletic. Uh, got some guys that can run. And, uh, you know, but running in shorts is different than running with 40 pounds of gear on, trying to chase somebody who's pretty fast too. So uh, we'll see how that, that goes. But I'm excited moving forward about and, and like what they've done this summer. I like the way they've worked. I uh, like the way they've committed. They've spent spending the time learning what to do. And again, I think we're ahead. I don't think I know we're ahead of where we were when we when we stopped in the spring. It's where we are now. Ted, you talk about uh, being ahead uh, now from where you were at the end yeah. of the spring. What are a, a couple areas where you feel like your guys have made progress? Maybe outside of just the the strength and conditioning yeah. aspect of things. And what do you most want to see uh, over these first uh, this first part of camp? To, to make that next step. Okay. Well, I see an improved football IQ. Uh, and you can tell that. You can tell the guys have been working because of that as far as uh, knowing assignments, understanding the defense, understanding where their help is, uh, because playing team defense is a big deal as far as knowing where your help is and playing opposite your help, where if you've got help outside, you may want to make sure you stay inside leverage. Things like that, the details of that, that allow you to play fast and allow you not to, to have to think and process as opposed to react. And uh, so in addition to that, learning offense too, uh, meaning formation tendencies, uh, motions, shifts, uh, all the receiver splits, all those things that go into the, the, the pre-snap process that the more you can understand that and recognize that, the faster you can play because then you can anticipate. And I think that's what the, the, the really great players do. They anticipate, they, they play ahead of the play and stay behind, instead of behind the play. If that makes sense to you, yeah. Yeah, Ted, going into spring, we were sort of wondering, David Aguebu, did he still fit this position? He let us know flat out, I'm still on Mike. So what is it about David? What traits does he have that makes him so good in that role? He is such a relentless worker. Uh, he's changed his body. He's lost 20 pounds. Uh, he's moving a lot better. Uh, and you're talking about a guy that, uh, that spends a lot of time working at his craft and it's paid off. Uh, I'm really proud of him and uh, looking forward to watching him perform at camp. John Hoover. Ted, you guys have a whole uh, spring behind you, obviously, and, and the off season. But for a new staff, I'm curious, what are your, some of your priorities for the early install in terms of just training camp, getting these guys ready to go and having them ready to go by August, uh, September 1st? Yeah, well, you know, all summer long, uh, we've worked on game plans. Uh, so the installation to, to mirror what we're going to see you know, in the first several games. Uh, so we've got a, a big jump on that as a staff. And at the same time, uh, you know, going through things together as a staff. Uh, but we're on the same page and we're moving forward. And, we're, and I've got, I'm very fortunate to work with a, 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 guys, a group of guys that are, that are team-centered. 
Uh, you know, there's some staffs out there where guys build kingdoms in their own little area, and our guys are all about the team. And uh, it, I've enjoyed that and uh, looking forward to it. Is there still a newness for the guys yeah. in terms of learning your language and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, there is a newness. Uh, yeah, you know, every day gets a little bit better. But, you know, certainly as you go through year one of, 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 mo of most staffs, uh, it, it, but you know what? You're always learning. If you're not learning, you're falling behind, whether it's year 36 or year two. So, I mean, that part of it, we're, we're trying to always learn every day. Yeah. Cliff uh, Brown. Yeah, over here. Um, Coach, so obviously you have a new staff. A lot of players are new as well, so they don't know each other. You just mentioned guys maybe not knowing where their help is coming from and so on and so forth. How do you, I don't know, create that kind of continuity uh, given the limits that you said that there were uh, in terms of time. Right. I think it just gets back to maximize your teaching. You know, when you have meetings to be to be prepared, to be organized, to be detailed of knowing exactly what you want to get done. Uh, because every defensive call has a strength and every defensive call there's a stress point to it. And you want your guys to understand, okay, when, when, when this is called, they shouldn't be able to do this. But when this is called, hey, this is the stress point of it, so we've got to be able to protect the stress point and understanding all that because, it, it, you know, if they're if we're in bail coverage and they're throwing a five-yard hitch, break up and tackle it, you know. But hey, if we're loading the box, then they shouldn't be able to run the football. So, it, it, understanding, you know, understanding the stress point of every call and the strength of every call. Let's go second round, Barry Trammell. Yeah, Ted, uh, you've been a lot of places, particularly Clemson, though. The talent you found here? How does it compare to what you've seen in the past, particularly at Clemson? Uh, on the defensive side? Yeah, I really don't I don't I don't I don't really want to compare talent. Uh, I just want to appreciate the talent we've got here. And we've got some talented guys and uh, I'm looking forward to, to coaching these guys. Certainly Clemson is extremely talented, well coached, uh, great culture, but you know, I'm at Oklahoma and I wanna I wanna focus on these guys. Okay, uh, front row, just focusing on these guys, <clears throat> you've got C.J. Colton comes in after in the summer not being here in the spring. Yeah. What are the things he's got to catch up on this month that, that maybe the guys in front of him have already? Well, if you look at it right, whenever he got here, it was May or June, uh, you know, he was four or five. Those other guys had four or five months in the system that he didn't have. So catching up to the language, catching up to scheme, uh, the way that uh, the, the requirements in the weight room under Coach Schmitty, uh, how you how you have to perform there, uh, the standards. Uh, so, he, but but again, he's come in with a great attitude and has worked hard. And uh, you know, it's just it, it's playing catch up a little bit. But uh, I'm excited to see what he's going to do. You know, once we start camp, because he's an experienced player there as well. But again, uh, he's going to get what he earns, as all our guys are. There's not going to be nothing nothing handed to anybody. And there's uh, there's competition at those spots too. You mentioned his experience. What about his? There's a reason you guys wanted to bring him here, but what about him maybe makes you think he, he can catch up and be ready to contribute, whatever that looks like in September? Well, he has good tape. Uh, you know, he's been in he's been in situations in college stadiums against, you know, really good receivers. And so he has that level of experience and that that's something that you can't, uh, you can't fabricate. You know, you can't fabricate experience. And uh, so to have that, and I think he's confident. Uh, and at the same time, I go back to, hey, just like every guy on our team's got to earn, he's gonna he's gonna get whatever he earns, uh, just like just like we all are. So uh, that's the the mantra and getting him caught up and you know the experience obviously is a is a factor that's on his side. Okay, back to the uh, second one, Justin Martinez. Coach, you guys had a few off-season events. I think there was the trip out to mahogany. You guys had some animal snakes and lemurs and stuff out here a few weeks ago. So just what? Lemurs and snakes, I think I saw here on campus. You guys brought some zoo animals out here. I mean, just can you kind of speak to these? I didn't get involved with um, snakes. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, yeah. Can you kind of speak to just some of these, these awesome things in terms of team chemistry and stuff? Just how close has this group gotten? And is there an event maybe you guys have had that was your favorite? Um, I think that uh, getting to know one another, you know, that is so critical for any organization, but especially a football team, because I think when you, you get to know one another, and you watch each other specifically work, uh, then you can respect a guy. And when you can respect a man, you can fight for that man. 
and uh, but just to, to establish the the brotherhood that goes into what the what the great teams have, uh, and time away from you know activities like you brought up away from football, uh, but just getting together and spending time, whether it's grabbing a pizza or or whatever, just getting to know each other, and because we all come from such different backgrounds and different places to try and blend to become one. And again, the more, the deeper that you know each other, the tighter the bonds. So that's that, that's part of any great team, I think. And again, gets back to knowing each other so you can respect each other. Okay, this side, second row, Parker. Uh, yeah, coach, you've you've been several different places in your coaching career. You're, You're like son. the third guy that said that. <laughs> <laughs> your, your son's been a lot of places as well. No, You're the first guy that said that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, four, four different teams entering his sixth season. So as you've watched him grow and mature as a coach as well as a dad, uh, seeing where he is today, how much you entrust in him with a leadership role in that linebacker group? Well, um, you know, he has been a couple places. Uh, and I just, I'm, I'm proud of how he's worked, just like I'm proud of how the other guys have worked. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, our job is to put the people that earned it on the field. And he's going to have to earn <clears throat> whatever his role is. Uh, and at the same time, because he's been around the block, a time or two, as you mentioned, um, you know. To again, I get back to the same type of experience, and uh, but uh, this is a different, this is a different experience because of the uh, the culture here. Uh, you know, I'm like I am with all our players. What gets poured into him on a daily basis from Coach Venables and the rest of our staff, I'm really grateful for that. Uh, but again, he's going to get what he's what he earns when we hit the field. He's number 18. And, that's that's the way it goes, you know. Uh, but I'm pleased with him, and uh, you know. But again, he's in he's in a, a, a battle and a competition, but that's going to help him. It's going to help the, the other linebackers as well. So it's it's win win. Yeah. Okay, standing up in the back, Lee Benson. Coach, uh, you mentioned earlier that this summer you, you are on insulation, and I think you mentioned that some game planning for some of the early opponents. Curious, uh, last year when you were working with Coach Venables, is, is that the same kind of situation you guys uh, did last summer? You, does he work ahead like that? Is, is that a common, common, kind of a common practice? Yeah, it, it, yeah, we did that last year as well at Clemson. And, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of the staffs that I've been on, you, you, you do that. Uh, because when you, when you hit camp, uh, there's some things that you're going to install because your bread and butter, your things that you're going to carry every week. But there's also some very uh, – game plan specific things uh, that, that that we want to get installed and everything that we carry right isn't going to be good for what we're seeing on a daily basis against our offense but at the same time uh, football is a game of repetition and you want to build up those reps against certain uh, certain concepts certain types of plays formations whatever as far as what we're doing defensively with our calls so uh, and it's been my experience over the years that you don't want to just throw something that, that completely different that you know, you come up with this thing that in, in week seven, and well, wait a minute, what's, you know, the players are, you know, what's this? Because again, it gets back to the repetition. You know, if you're, if you're doing something just a couple times, your players aren't going to be able to execute it at a high level. So to build up reps with, with what we're doing, yeah. When you talk about game playing for opponents early on, how many games out do you go? I mean, is there a set number? I'm just, I'm just kind of curious how that works. Yeah, seven. Seven? Several. Several, okay. <laughs> Several. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll go back far right side, John Hoover. Uh, you, you said you can't fabricate experience. When you look at TD's experience and you look at Deshaun's experience, does that help those guys with that newness that I was talking about? Absolutely. In terms it does. of picking up little scraps of information, being able to relate them to the game or whatever? Yeah, it does. Uh, it, you know, when you get into those where guys have played, you know, that many snaps over the course of their career, uh, yeah, it certainly it certainly should, um, just like you would expect it, you know, at any position. Just like, you know, in your business, if a guy was doing it for five or six years as opposed to a guy, you know, coming straight out of college or whatever, you would expect the guy in your business to be five or six years to be ahead of the, of, of the rookie. Uh, and at the same time, that doesn't mean the rookie can't grow and become great too. But, uh, yeah, the experience is, a, is something that uh, I think – if you look at across um, – a lot of the teams that win championships, they're older. You got a lot of older guys playing. You know, um, not to say that hey, talented freshmen can't walk in the door and earn a job or whatever, but uh, you know, 
guys that are battle tested and, and, and you like that. If three more and then Coach Roof will be available on, on the side for a few more minutes. Let's go back to Eric Bailey. Coach, I wanted to ask you, you know, Miguel Chavis, he's been here six, seven months as a first time position coach. How much have you appreciated the way he's attacked both on the field coaching and off the field recruiting? Well, he's, he's, he's attacked it. You're exactly right. And uh, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, he's humble. Uh, he's a hard worker. He wants to learn. And he's very intelligent. He's, he's, you know, he's played the game at a high level and have been around it. You know, it's at, at Clemson for a long time under Coach Venables. So uh, very appreciative of that. But our, our entire staff is, is like that. Um, a, a group of men, that, uh, men and women now that, uh, you know, are hard workers, are committed and uh, humble and at the same time, you know, trying to get better every day, just like, just like we ask our players to do. And uh, we're no different. Okay, James Hale. Ted, you said earlier there's going to be great competition at your position. You have some older guys that have been in the program. You have some guys that are one year, but you have some, a great group of young linebackers too. Could you do a deep dive for us and tell us what you think you have, you know, talk about some of these guys that you have at the linebacker position, please? Well, uh, yeah, you know, if you look at uh, David Uwebu and Danny Stutzman, I mean, you know, both of those guys have played played football. Danny's obviously just a sophomore and David's a, a fourth-year guy. But, uh, you know, both both been battle-tested and uh, – both of those guys had a great spring, and there's a lot of competition there. But, you know, it's a competition where there's respect. Those guys really care about one another and uh, I think appreciate what each other brings to the table and uh, have made each other better. Uh, so, and, But my job is to get the best group of the best group together on the field, whoever that is and whatever role that is. Uh, but so that's been, that's been a great competition. Um, Deshaun and TD. I've had, a, I've had a great competition as well, and I've, I've, it's made both of them better. Because when you're when you're competing, uh, you know if you take a day off or a playoff, you're going to be behind the eight ball a little bit, and because uh, you know the other guy that you're competing against isn't. So that that just you know raises everybody's level, which is a wonderful thing for our football team. Uh, and then you got you mentioned somebody. Did you mention Shane? Somebody did, yeah. It's earlier, you did, yeah. I mean, Shane's had a great, um, great off season as well too. So, you know, he's in the mix. Then <clears throat> behind that, you know, we've got uh, you know several freshmen, uh, and and they're they're way ahead because they got here in January. From uh, you know the shock of going from for some people it's bigger than others. All right, the shock of going from high school football to college football, especially in a place like the University of Oklahoma. Uh, there's a there's a leap there. Uh, everything's faster. Everything's there's a, a, certainly in our program a high level of accountability. But just the newness, you know, like hey, uh, oh, this is my dorm now. Okay, this is where I eat. This is where the weight room is. All right, I'm supposed to be here at six, but that really means five fifty. I mean, you know, all all those things that kind of go into the the newness of it uh, from a from a practice standpoint, you know. Uh, and some high schools, and every 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 situation is different. But some high schools, you may run two or three coverages, and here you may install four or five in a day. So I mean, and then be expected to master that. So I mean that that part of it, there's a lot of there's a lot goes into that goes into that that I don't think a lot of people understand. Um, they just see the the bright lights and see them running out of the tunnel with the smoke in front of eighty eight or ninety thousand, and they don't see all those things that you know. That, that go into that and some because our guys are just guys I mean they're they're, they're young men that go through the same thing that are, now is do they have an awesome opportunity and is it a, a privilege to be here absolutely but there's still things that they go through on a daily basis some anxiety some angst some first time like like we all have you know that uh, is part of the equation but they are so much better by having come in mid-year you know being where we are now as opposed to you know, have it if they were to come in, in in June, and that's not to say the guys that came in in June haven't had a great summer as well, because they they have as well. And uh, it, but it's 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 a transition, and there's there's growth and learning that happens in those transitions. So, but uh, yeah. Sooner Scoop HD.